Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV. I'm Candace Sipos with JSA, and we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations in the digital infrastructure industry. We are in the prime place for doing just that. We are live from DCD, Virginia, in Leesburg, just outside of Washington, DC. It is day two here at the conference, very much bustling, very much loud and exciting, and we've got a really good energy going here. Um, so I am joined by Alex Marshall, Group Director for Clark Energy. Thank you so much for joining us, Alex. A pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll just dive right in. So we're going to chat a bit about energy solutions for, for data centers. So first off, can you just talk a little bit about how you kind of see those energy solutions evolving for our industry? Yeah, sure. So we, we've got a company with about 30 years track record of dis dis distributed energy. We think that data centers are somewhat behind the curve on the adoption of energy efficiency measures that's been uh, deployed elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So the, the hottest topic clearly is availability of power for data centers and hyperscale data centers. And that's set in the backdrop of um, the electrification of heat requirements, the electrification of transportation in the wider world. Uh, so all of these things are going to be a, a huge draw on the, on the grid. As I was mentioning, we perhaps did our first combined heat and power plant project for data centers 10 years ago. So recovering, generating electricity on site, base load with cooling and or heat. We think in general, the data center sector has been relatively slow in adoption, adoption of these technologies. Yeah. Um, following you know, wider spread uh, integration of heat recovery systems, those data centers can then move to renewable fuels. Assets that are deployed now, gas-based generation can clearly be fueled by natural gas, but also biogas, uh, biomethane, which is also renewable natural gas or hydrogen. Uh, and then with the world becoming much more flexible uh, and different types of power generation giving different benefits, integration of microgrids into a solution, but not just electrical microgrids, also thermal microgrids. Because thermal energy and cooling energy can also part of that energy balance. Oh, interesting. Okay, great. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about can, so can distributed energy for data centers be wholly provided by renewable energy then? So, so firstly, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I would say renewable energy is typically thought of in terms of intermittent wind power, mm -hmm. intermittent solar power, which is great and the, the, the costs are very economical, but they don't necessarily match demand and supply. So first of all, um, renewable uh, gases are a storable for, form of energy. So whether that's biogas, biomethane, hydrogen, they can be stored like, similar to a battery, but in a, in a grid or a bag, and then fed into the, the system over time. So you can either run base load with the renewable fuel, or you can use that renewable fuel to balance the intermittent nature of the uh, renewables and or with batteries. Excellent. So yes, and uh, so, yes. yeah, that's, a, that's great. Um, so what's the importance of gas engine maintenance then in ensuring operational resilience? So if data centers are moving to the generation of their own power, mm -hmm. that's typically a lot more different from a, a diesel engine based backup gen set. Backup gen sets typically are designed not to run. You don't want them to run. Clearly, if they run, they're there to support you, but they're not designed to run continuously. Yeah. Gas engines, on the other hand, are. And the only way you can get that to work properly is a quality product with quality balance of plants, not just the core engine or gen set, the surrounding systems are, are around it, but then also the maintenance. And the maintenance isn't just about people. Clearly, it's about well-trained people. It's mm -hmm. about manufacturer-trained service technicians. But then it's also about availability of lubricating oil, availability mm -hmm. of spare parts, um, and this response times to breakdowns and how that they can be, be managed in the grander scheme of things. And again, that's all set up in the backdrop of the digital economy with uh, asset performance management software, which enables you to either have site-based monitoring or remote monitoring, depending upon what's appropriate for the site. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for the insights there, for outlining that for us. That's a really good overview. And um, folks can go to your website for more information. If you want to, do you want to give that website or any other place maybe they can find you on LinkedIn? Certainly. Look, look for me on LinkedIn or uh, our website, which is www.clark-energy.com. And that's Clark with an E. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, viewers, for hanging out with us here live from DCD, Virginia on JSA TV. Happy networking.